we're back with our boy from London town uh, with the hot news, Billy Body. Billy Body, what you got? Boom. Yeah, so not much going on this last uh, few weeks. It's been it's been pretty quiet. Um, the main thing to to pick up on the main the main development or the main story, I think, over the last few weeks, oh, apart from the stuff, obviously AEW is getting a lot of sh- with the the injuries and everybody saying we knew this was coming and whatnot. Yeah, I haven't got any stories about that, but obviously that's the main story this week. Right. Um, I, I don't know. I guess. It would be interesting. I'm sure you've discussed it on well, another show. I mean, I've, of- I've been on the show for six years, right? Mm. And I have re- repeated all, over and over over the years that there's just a lack of common sense with regards to injury prevention. And we've, I've talked about it recently. But, bro, we talked about it, I think, two or three weeks ago about how reckless wrestlers are today up around the head. Like they're doing these side kicks right to the head. You know, nobody's protecting themselves. They're forearming themselves in the head. You know, Moxley's clothesline the guy. Like, it's like people don't even understand. Like, like what CT is. You know, like they haven't been educated. They they missed missed the class. You know, we should get Joe on the case because I'm sure we could do it because I know that he's always looking to do shows. We should get Christopher Nowinski on our show. Yeah, because isn't he like the head of? Yeah, he's head of the concussion. He's the one that blew up the Tua story because he tweeted out before the game started. If Tua gets hurt tonight, there should be criminal investigation because, like you know, letting this guy play with with, because they sooner or they might be letting him play this week. It blew up, but yeah, well, he should. I mean, like, oh, you get me? You you get? I mean, if you pass all the neurological tests. You know, bro, we never know what's what people that have CTE and told you they die and you cut their head open. You can't, you can't find this no, out. No, but I think him, they have right? this new way of the, you can see the proteins out when you're alive. Yeah, they're well, they're coming up with something. Yeah. Okay, well, but but here's my thing. There, there is a there is a, up with, there is a basic understanding. Okay. There is a basic understanding. Okay, in in sp- athletic competition, that there are certain sports and professional wrestling too, bro. You can suffer head trauma. It's a risk. You're you're basically you're 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 contributing or entering at your own risk, right? So you know there this like a, like a, the Nowitzki like a you know, bravo <sighs> to him for for keeping for being like you know proactive about this. But like, dude, the guy's like you know Nowitzki would want just any type of like head trauma sporting event just kind of like canceled. You know, he wants guys if you get a head concussion, just go away. You do, you do. But it's like, dude, they're paying these guys. You're paying a guy ten million dollars, okay? He gets hurt, all right? And if you noticed a couple years ago, it was like automatically two weeks for concussions, correct? Like they, they would have to stay out two weeks. Bro, they're going into concussion protocol now, and if you pass all the neurological tests, you can play the next week, okay? Right. Because, so perfect example, Chris Olave, the, the wide receiver for the New Orleans Saints, I don't know if anybody saw that. Bro, he got knocked out cold last week, uh, two weeks ago too. And here are 10 days later, and they're letting him play again, bro. He was out cold. He hit the thing, and he his his arms were limp, and he just like flopped on the ground and everything. And it's like, okay, he got knocked out. He's back up. And sometimes it's like there's not lingering yeah, side some effects. Some guys recover stuff. quicker than others. Recover boxers. So, so he's my, so he's no, you get knocked down to got... fight. You're back up and fighting the guy. It's like they don't stop a boxing match for a knockdown, which is technically kind of a it's a con- technically a concussion, you know. But they're entering into into at their own risk. So go ahead, Billy. This is what I wanted to know this week. Why this is what I wanted. I wanted to ask you two uh, because I because I obviously get to talk to you two. Um, so there, a lot of stuff online is saying why haven't AEW got a performance center? Why don't these guys learn how to work and whatnot? Now I understand WCW back in the day had a power plant, but you two obviously never went there because you didn't need to because you got your experience all the way before you came in. Right now, were you guys working with concussions in the late nineties or? Where stylistically, were you just able to avoid them? Why? Why did? Uh, it, why do they need necessarily an NXT performance center when we went through the eighties and nineties? The main problem that was causing death and what that was, was was steroid abuse. Now that's not the case any, anymore. If there is steroid usage, it's much safer because people know how to take them and whatnot. So I'm not really. Well, if it's legal with testosterone growth hormone, you go to the. the yeah, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. There, I'm right. not. I'm not anti steroid. Anti steroid at all. But what I am, what I do want to know is, were you guys working super hurt without the knowledge of concussions, or were you just generally a lot more careful? And this is a news. This is a style problem. Okay, so <laughs> this I'll answer this. Okay, back then, unless you were knocked out cold or were really messed up. You, you worked. So well, guys you worked kept with, the belt. I, 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 talk, I, I did the I, get a load of this. I did Jericho's uh, talk is Jericho, right? Years ago. 
And how I many, told how many you, times were you on Talk Is Jericho? Just once. Oh, I was on three times. <laughs> this is the low, the lowest rated shows ever, Joe. Yeah. Um, if, but Chris actually he he took those shows off because they were getting some poor ratings. I did. I heard. Um, that. <laughs> so I talked to Jericho, right, bro? I got I I got my bell rung maybe once or twice, and then because because uh, in retrospect, there's a spot I I looked back on tape and that when uh there was a spot in in San Diego where Goldberg speared me, right? And Goldberg picked me up for the, for the jackhammer. Okay. Now when he speared me, I took a very quick back up and I, I think I hit my head because but I don't recall this, but I'm assuming because well, bro, he picked up for the jackhammer. I know how to wrestle. Okay. I didn't post on his leg or nothing. I was just like limp. And he literally had to muscle and like, like get me over and give the jackhammer to me. And I think that like, I got my bell rung on, on the spear. But the only time I ever like have a mem- I memorized a, a concussion incident was I wrestled Kenny King about four years ago. He hit me with a sidekick to the front of my head. I forgot to put my hand up. He hit me right in the head. I got a lump on my head, but at the point of impact, a very brief millisecond black flash. Like, like it's just like, you know, the, 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 I'm looking at the light. It just went bl- blank, right? Just very quickly. I just had a lump on my head after the match. No symptoms, no headache, no dizziness, no nothing. I drove home and I couldn't remember the code to get into my house, but the security code, that was my symptom, but I had no other, no nausea, nothing. Right. So I asked Jericho, I told you the story to Jericho, right? I go, Jericho, like how many times did you get your bell rung? Like in a match? And he says, Oh, a hundred, bro. When you get your bell rung, technically that is a concussion. Okay. And like, they'll say like there's levels of concussions, you know, and stuff like you get knocked out cold or just like, like my thing, you know, I'll, I just forgot when my – I couldn't remember th- th- something. You know, that, that was my symptom. But, like, bro, 100 concussions, okay? Like, like technically speaking, I'm like, you know, so now think about that. He, he didn't report it. We were, You work through this and everything. How many of those are happening today with wrestlers? Because you look at the way they work. Everybody's forearming each other in the head. Everybody's kicking each other in the head. There's got to be these spots where there's – you know, there's no way every single one of them have, have not rung somebody's bell, and they're not reporting it. Because nobody really understands, you know, that is a concussion. I still think there's a bunch of professional wrestlers that, that think like, well, concussion is when you get knocked out. It's like, no, a concussion is, is head trauma, technically speaking. And there's different there's different layers of it. And I, I just think today is like, you know, I mean, we, back then we, we worked. Like, I remember, I remember Eddie Guerrero was f***ed up one day. He was like sleeping before the show. And he was like, uh, man, you know, and they probably went out and worked. Because like there was that that macho attitude back then, the old school thing. If like if you didn't work, you were, you know, you you worked hurt. If you had like uh, concussions, you kind of just toughed it out. But it was kind of like that macho thing. Like okay, let's we we're going to get through this. Cody, I always remember actually me and my me and my friend uh, back in two thousand five. We 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 met Angle. We were in a WWE hotel. We met Kurt Angle, and we were just amazed. We were like, he looks, he sounds terrible. He looks terrible. He looks tired. He looks hunched over. Like, right. how is he got? How how does he like go out there and do Co- that? Like, coffee he, he, and pills. It's completely different. Like, he, he, when pills. he goes out, he's completely different. Coffee and pills. And I, I'll never forget too. There was a show I went to. A show backstage at uh, WWE years and years and years ago when when the Hard Rock Hotel was still here. And Christian had a match with Randy Orton that night. And he met me in the bar afterwards for a drink. And he's like, ah, I got I got messed up out there, bro. He got a concussion that night, and he he was like done. That was the last time that he had like worked kind of regularly, you know, until, until he came back. And it was it was the night like in Vegas, like many many years ago. But so is, it, uh, is so, the answer to your question essentially to summarize? It's not a big problem with AEW compared to before. You guys just worked through, like, so there's no there's no mass the, the style. Well, is we, if we would have known, C- we known if we would have known about CTE back then, we would have had concussion <laughs> protocol. We didn't have one because it wasn't a big. It did we didn't know about it back then. But this is 25 years ago. You know, but what we know now, it's crazy that that wrestlers, athletes, some uh, often are not. You know, they, they don't they don't get it. It's like you know, head, so, head trauma is a concussion. Do none of you two? Do you do you or Conan not watch their product and feel that it's unsafe? Do you not when you when they have so many accounts pulling up their botches and their almost broken necks and whatnot? Do you well, not? Bro, look the, at- they're they're indie because there's a lot of indie workers on that show. Right, they get a lot of their shows and they don't put them through. You know, you'll take indie work. The WWE takes indie workers, and if they think they're a little bit reckless or stuff, they'll put them in the performance center and teach them the structured work. Which you see in WWE, even though guys do still get hurt, you know there there is that thing is like you know they teach them how to work safe. And AEW doesn't really. There's nobody teaching them how to work safe or like 
you know, telling them not don't do this move, don't do that move. They just do whatever they mm-hmm. want to do there, you know. So, all right, what's your next story? Oh, that wasn't a story. I just wanted to speak to you guys oh. about it because it's the main. Conan, story you ever, week, do you ever but- work with a concussion before, Conan? Yeah, well, yeah, a lot, bro. I mean, a lot. Then just we were ignorant and we didn't know. Like you said, it was a macho thing, bro. I remember, Billy, when I went to Japan, to New Japan, and um, they had this. The first time I wrestled there was against Chris Benoit. Bro, he slapped the f- out of me like those Russian slap leagues. Have you seen those where they just yeah. stand there and <laughs> slap the f- out of each other? Oh, by the way, Dana White just invested in that. Did you see that? Yeah. They're going to be they're gonna have a, a league slap fight league. All right, Not so <laughs> so he, bro, he slapped the f- out of me, and I slapped him as hard as I could, and he rung my bell, and then he slapped me even harder, and I was already dizzy, and I was like, I slapped him right back, but it's like, you know, Disco says it's a macho thing, because he brought, he rung my bell, and I know I rung his both, you know, and we right. started off the show, like, kind of woozy, and then I did, like, a German suplex to him off the third, and we, bro, the whole match, we were just beating the f- out of each other because that's what the Japanese like and they're like oh, oh, oh and you're like a mark and you're feeding into it and so the next day and I remember the next day I fought this other guy called Otani and he kind of started the match the same way and I was like and I told Chris because I had Chris on the third night again and I go I told Chris bro let's do the same match we had let's take out the slaps he goes oh no the slaps stay in and you just took it you know we didn't know any better you know but what we know now we should know better and we should take care of each other and what like disco says i don't know if somebody's teaching the wrestlers you would assume that the veterans are telling them hey work safer because that's their job um and maybe the talent isn't listening but that is a problem the proliferation of what i call semi-professional wrestlers from the indies in the professional leagues and they're kind of reckless yeah so with, from your from your perspective, more so than Glenn, because Glenn's it's almost like Glenn's the, the Disco Inferno was relatively safe where he was on the card. Right. When 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 you when you went in, I mean, when when you went as Max Moon, the WWE wanted to do something with that. When you were there was as Conan, you immediately become the US champion. Then they then they elevate you again and put you in the in the Wolf Pack. So at times you've been a lot higher up, very close to like to, to the main event on the massive companies. So when you do it, when you make the decision that I'm going to be the tough guy and I'm not going to mention concussion, is that just because you're, you're, it's a tough industry and you want to be tough? Or are you looking at your spot like when you're, when, when you're being pushed? Do you look at your spot? And, and a little bit of both. Yeah, a little bit of both. Good question. Yeah. A little yeah. bit of both. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right, what else you got here? Rhea, Rhea Ripley, <clears throat> who had a concussion, came back at the weekend. So that's the whole reason why she's mostly. Yeah, she was out since June, right? Yeah, in July or so. She was out for, for for a while. Yeah, they they take that seriously. So she she's been out for a while, and actually she got cleared. So the doctor, the WWE changed their their doctor from the guy that we all know. I think it's I forget, I haven't got his name written down. The guy who was in the CM Punk trial and the CM Punk uh, the CM Punk controversy and whatnot. Um, uh, it's, it's actually last week's story, so I haven't got it. I haven't got his name written down on this week's notes. But essentially, they made a change to the doctor, Chris Amon. Chris Amon, that's the one. So he he's been changed out now. The reason being is because a lot of w, a lot of guys um, wanted are, are now involved in, in certain things um, like um, like cupping and stem and they want uh, and they want stem cell access and whatnot through him. And he's not really oh, high right. on, on anything. So he, he's not really he's not really high on or not really familiar with how, how these things are carried out or or recommending them or advising them and whatnot. So there was a lot of um, there was a lot of like complaints about that in terms of that. That was my understanding. Ray, 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 Ray Mysterio is, is uh, big into the stem cell stuff. He's done, he's done a lot of treatments. Yeah, a lot There's, of guys are into that stem cell and cupping and, and all these. What is cupping? I've never heard this term. Those cups on the back that leave those red spots. Oh, is it? Yeah, that, bro, I was wondering what. That was. I, I, uh, I that's the know. that's the removal of that 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 so that takes out your your blood and cleans it and and circulates it back into you. It's real popular in Mexico. Yeah, really. Yeah. yeah. So he's so basically the, the the talent are into this stuff and he's not. So he he wasn't an advocate for it. So the the the, the basic feeling was that there was too much disconnect between what the talent wanted and what and how he wanted to do things. So they just wanted a newer doctor who was more familiar with 
with all of these new things. So that that right. that's that that's one thing that's that's happened. That's I got a funny week. story. There's a uh, <laughs> the, so the worst ever person I've ever met in the professional wrestling business. We did a tour in Germany, a two week tour during Christmas, uh, where basically they drove us around in BMWs. It'd be like a driver and three talent. Were you on that tour, Conan? You're on that tour, right? Uh, I don't from think me- so. From, okay, so we had the promoter's name was Dieter. <laughs> okay, that was the guy's name. Oh, that he, he smoked a, a lot, yeah. Smoker and close talker, okay? Right. So, and when we were on this tour, right, um, you know, WCW, if you get hurt, they take care of you, right? <clears throat> so, like, they, you know, so they had the doctor at the show overseas and stuff and all that. And, like, you know, some of the guys were, you know, like, like over there, they, they just give you prescriptions of pain pills everything you know it's a lot different you just, you just, hey take this take this take this so like about near the end of the tour Dieter comes up to me I don't even know why he goes he goes hey this is a great tour you know just want everybody goes but there is the matter of the um of the of the payment for the for the medical I'm like the payment for the medical what are you talking about don't you guys take care of this he goes, no 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 I bring the doctor he goes, they wanted us to pay the doctor like he comes but dude, what are you talking about? It's like you know. So, but I'm not forgetting. He said there is the matter of the of the fee for the doctor, and I'm like, well, what are you telling me this for? Benoit wanted to beat the crap out of the guy, huh. out, out of the promoter. We had to talk him down. He goes, that's it's like you know, <laughs> so I was like, yeah. But Dieter, worst guy ever. Um, so keep going. Great name. Yeah. 